Hello friends, Dr. Chad Arno here from the University of Dayton Winds and Brass channel with another trombone basics video. This is part of an ongoing series of videos aimed at developing trombone players to give them information they need in various stages of their musical journey. Today we're going to be talking about how to oil the valve on a trigger trombone. These are typically rotor valves, called that because they rotate, and they work a lot the same as French horn valves or the valves you see on many tubas at the more advanced levels. In fact, this oiling procedure will work for those instruments as well, even though I'm demonstrating it with a trombone. Now, there are many different kinds of rotor valves that go on trombones, and the most basic kind is the kind we're gonna be illustrating with today. It's just a typical rotor valve, the kind that's been in use since the 1800s. If you have a more exotic valve on your instrument, if the valve has a name, like a person's name like Thayer, or a more technical term like axial flow or things of that nature, that probably requires a different procedure than this. So your mileage may vary. Always follow the manufacturer's recommendations for that and make sure that you are caring for your instrument safely and doing what it needs. If you're ever uncomfortable with any of these procedures, don't perform them. Simply ask your local repair person for their advice and maybe have them do some of the maintenance for you. But oiling a valve is a simple thing that you can do yourself, and we'll illustrate it using a very typical trombone that a lot of school programs have. My own university owns two models just like this. This happens to be my high school son's trombone. So we are gonna oil this rotor valve using three different oils, which may seem like a lot, but think about the motor in a car. There are all sorts of different lubricants that are used for different things. You wouldn't put engine oil in the transmission, for example, they have different needs. So this is the same thing. The rotor valve has different parts and each part has a slightly different need with the lubricant that it requires. The general rule is this, the larger the part, the lighter the oil you use and the more often you oil it. The smaller the part, the heavier the oil and the less often you use. I was taught how to take care of rotor valves by a French horn player and they're pretty fanatical about their valves and I follow the system that my mentor taught me and that's the system I'll be showing you today. So we use three different oils. There's a lighter valve oil like what trumpet players use. There's a slightly heavier oil. This one's called a rotor spindle oil or bearing oil is another term you might see. And then this is a heavier ball joint oil and we'll see when each of these is used. The first thing we'll do though is start with the light trumpet valve oil. This is what you want to oil directly into the rotor core itself. Inside of here is the rotor and you want to make sure that you get oil into there. You can go through the tuning slides either by taking the main tuning slide off or taking the F attachment tuning slide off, but there's always the danger that you're going to wash tuning slide grease down into the valve. That's not a good combination. We need the valve to move freely and dirty tuning slide grease being washed down in there won't work. So if you're not confident that you can get oil in there without washing tuning slide grease, don't do it that way. Instead, you can take the oil and you can go in through the hand slide receiver right here and just drip some oil straight into the valve while you're activating the valve. And I'll show you that now. With the cap off, simply tilt the instrument, put the end of the valve oil in there, Give it a light squeeze and just a few drops of oil. If you find yourself hosing the valve down, you're probably using too much oil. And you want to activate the valve and move it around so you distribute the oil all through the casing of the valve so that inside here, the entire rotor core has been coated with oil. Might need a little bit more, but a few drops is usually enough if you're doing this pretty regularly. Again, activating the valve will help spread it around. Now, there are other spots that you wanna make sure you oil as well. There are two places that where the rotor is suspended. We call those bearings. They manage the friction on there. One of the bearing surfaces is underneath this cap and the other is on the back of the valve. And we're gonna oil each of those with the spindle oil that we looked at earlier. It's a slightly heavier oil. And we'll do this slightly less often than we did the trumpet valve oil down into the rotor core. To get the top bearing, we unscrew the rotor cap here and place it aside. If there's any old moisture or lubricant on there, you wipe that off. And you can see inside here a little part that rotates. That is the actual stem of the valve that comes out through this top bearing plate. And all you want to do is take 
your spindle oil and put a couple of drops right on top of that little protrusion. Again, work the valve a little bit to help it get in there. And over time, more oil will get down inside that top bearing. Then you take the cap and you thread it back on. Now, I sometimes will actually start the cap going the wrong way, not righty tighty lefty loosey, but the other way, just to get the threads to catch before I turn it around and go the right way, because you don't want to get it cross threaded and get it stuck on there. So we've now oiled the bearing on the top. We're going to turn the bell section over and do the same thing on the other side. On the back here, a stem of the rotor comes out of the case and goes through this arm right here. This arm is called the stop arm, and it's called that because it's an arm that stops the valve from rotating too far. If you look here, you'll see there's a bumper here and a bumper there, and this stop arm rotates along a path that stops at each of those bumpers. What is inside the stop arm here is, again, the stem of the rotor that comes out of the casing. You want to get a couple of drops of oil in between the stop arm assembly and where the valve comes out of the case. So you'll take your oil and just get a couple of drops in there. And again, work the valve to get the oil down in there. Over time, that will continue to go down in there and provide the oil in the place that you need. Now, on this particular trombone, there's one more thing to do. Yours may not be exactly the same. This uses a mechanical ball and socket linkage to connect the thumb lever to the rest of the rotor. Older designs use string. String is great. String can be very quiet. It can be maintenance free because it doesn't need to be oiled. However, if it comes loose, especially in the middle of a concert, it can be interesting to string that back together. So a lot of manufacturers have gone to a ball and socket mechanical arm kind of linkage. And that requires a little bit of oiling as well. You can see here, there is a ball and socket joint right here that needs to be oiled. So this oil is specifically for ball joints and it's a heavier oil than we've used anywhere else. And this you'll do the least often because it typically doesn't require oiling that often in this area. And you'll take the bottle, which often have little needles on the end like this, and you'll just put a drop right around the ball and socket joint. And again, you want to activate the valve to help work that in. That will lubricate the ball and socket joint and help quiet it because it fills the space a little bit as the valve ages, as that ball and socket joint starts to get a little bit loosey-goosey, the oil will help fill the gap and keep it quiet. Some valve linkages will also have a ball and socket on this end. This particular one doesn't. Now, one more thing you may want to do to maintain your valve is every now and then take whatever set of screwdrivers are necessary and make sure all the parts are tight. In this case, we have a small slotted screw right here that we can put a screwdriver in, just make sure it's tight, and it is. There's a larger slotted screw here that you also want to make sure that's tight. There are two Phillips head screws here. You want to make sure those are tight. And this particular brand has two screws here that adjust the tension on the linkage. Those can be tightened, but if you tighten them too much, it's slow. If you loosen them too much, it clanks very loudly. So you want to adjust these carefully, if at all. And then there's often a screw where the thumb lever attaches to the brace here, usually accessible from the top or the bottom. In this case, it's a small slotted screw right here that you want to get a screwdriver into and make sure that it's nice and tight there. You follow those steps, your rotor valve will work quietly and quickly, and that's the golden combination. You don't want the instrument to sound like its own percussion section with loud clanking noises. You don't want the thing to be slow because then you'll be able to play tricky technical passages. So using a few different oils, you will figure out the best way to maintain your instrument. Now, if you're curious about which oils I personally use and recommend, well, you can go to the resources section of chadarno.com to a page called recommended supplies. These are my personal recommendations. And of course, your mileage may vary your instrument and your needs may be different. So please use your own discretion when choosing what to buy, if anything, for your own instrument. And of course, it goes without saying that University of Dayton does not endorse any particular brand of valve oil or screwdriver or anything silly like that. So again, 
Any decisions on what to buy are completely up to you. As always, if you want more information about this series of videos, like, subscribe, bell notification, all of that stuff, if you want more information about the University of Dayton Department of Music, you can go to go.udayton.edu slash music, which will be linked below. If you want more information about me or hear examples of my playing, you can go to chadarno.com. As always, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to answer whatever questions you have and help you along in your musical journey. Until next time, thanks.